Today, we're going to be connecting this to this. Hello fellow CNC nuts, and welcome. Today, I'm going to show you how I interface my Gecko G540 drive to the VFD on my spindle. Now, I'm a big fan of these Gecko drives. They're nice and compact little units. You can plug in four stepper motors to them and the parallel port from your PC or motion controller. On the back, they have 12 terminals. The minimum configuration requires you to supply a 48 volt power supply and, if you've got any brains anyway, an e-stop switch. With that minimum configuration, you can get your machine up and running. And up until now, that's how I've actually had mine working. But today, we're going to go a little bit further. I'm going to add to it a 12 volt power supply and a small 12 volt relay. We'll be using that to start and stop the spindle under control of Mac 3 or UC CNC. Once we've got that up and going, we're going to add another three wires between the Gecko drive and the VFD drive, and that will allow us to use pulse width modulation to control the speed of the spindle. Now, assist, to assist with this, I've done some drawings. Now, this drawing shows how to connect the 12 volt power supply and relay to the Gecko G540. It also shows how the relay contacts then connect to the VFD. Once we get Mac 3 configured, we'll be able to turn on and off that relay, and that relay in turn will turn on and off the spindle. Best of all, when you push the e-stop switch on your machine, it will automatically turn off the spindle as well. For this to work, you need to configure Mac 3. I've selected output 2, which by coincidence is the output number on the Gecko G540, though the numbers do not have to match. I've selected enable. I've then selected port number 2, which is port 2 on my UC300 Ethernet controller. If you're doing this connected via your parallel port, it would of course be port 1. I'm using pin 1, which is the pin going into the Gecko G540 for that particular port. Staying under ports and pins, we come along to spindle setup. Here we uncheck the disable spindle relays, and under M3 clockwise, we select the output number, in this case 2. That was output 2 we configured in the previous page. Going down further under general parameters, we need to set a spin-up time for the spindle. In my case, I've chosen 3 seconds. We then check immediate relay off before delay. If you're using UC CNC software, the setup is very similar. Check the spindle relay output enable. Set the relay pin number, in this case pin 1 on the parallel port going into the Gecko G540. And select the port number, in my case port 2 on the UC300 Ethernet controller. Set the M3 delay after the relay has turned on. Apply the settings and save the settings. So now that we have that relay under control of Mac 3 or UC CNC, we need to run some wires between the relay and the VFD. These connect to the FOR and DCM terminals within the VFD. But that's not all we need to do. 
we also need to make some programming changes to the VFD itself. We need to make sure that parameters PD001 is set to 1 to bring the VFD under external control. And we also need to make sure that PD042 is set to 2. This makes sure that the terminal we're using, the FOR terminal, is actually what we want it to be. In this case, we want it to turn the spindle on and make it rotate in the forward direction. With that programming done, now when we activate the relay, we should see a couple of things happen. First, on the VFD's face panel, we should see the FOR light come on solid instead of blinking, and the display on the uh, VFD's control panel should also stop blinking and come on solid. Hopefully as well, we'll also see the spindle start turning, but don't panic if it doesn't. If it simply has a value of zero on the uh, face panel of the VFD for speed, the problem is simply that the VFD doesn't know what speed it should be turning. Even if you put a minimum speed in there, and in my case I have 6,000, it does occasionally sit there at zero. And that's because, like I said, it doesn't know what speed it is. When we connect up the rest of the VFD to the Gecko drive, we'll be able to send that speed information to it, at which point in time, it will start spinning properly. There's a 50-50 chance it'll either spin or not spin, but you should see that display come up and stop flashing. Now next we're going to run the wires between the VFD drive and the Gecko G540. It requires three wires to control its speed. I've done another drawing showing these three wires and how they connect between the devices. Now, unlike the wires going to the relay, these three are polarity conscious. Do make sure you get them around the right way. If you don't, you could damage the Gecko drive or the VFD or both. Now that we've got those wires connected, we can go into Mac 3 and we'll configure it up. Again I come into ports and pins and I select enable spindle. I then set the step pin to pin 14 which is the pin that the Gecko G540 expects the pulse width modulation signal to come from and the step port of 2 which is the port on my UC300 Ethernet controller. The direction pin and direction port are left at 0. We now go into Pulley Selection, which we find under the Config menu, and I've selected Pulley number 1. I set the minimum speed as 0, and the maximum speed of 2400 RPM, which is the maximum for my spindle. I set the ratio of 1. Lastly, we come back into Ports and Pins. We go to Spindle Setup, and under Motor Control, we check Use Spindle Motor Output, Pulse Width Modulation Control, and we also set a Pulse Width Modulation Base Frequency. I found that 1200 works fine with the Gecko G540. Minimum Pulse Width Modulation is zero. If you didn't set up those general parameters before, now would be a good time to do so as well. If you're using UCCNC, then go to the Spindle tab and check Pulse Width Modulation Spindle. Set the Pulse Width Modulation pin to 14 and the port to port 2. Again, the Pulse Width Modulation frequency I've set to 1200 and has a minimum duty of 0% and a maximum of 100%. Under Spindle Velocity, I have a minimum of 0.001, which is the smallest number I can put there, and a maximum of 2400. I'm not using pulleys in this particular instance. 
So as before, we also need to program the VFD. We need to set parameter 1 or register 1, whatever you'd like to call it, to 1, which we did before when we programmed it up to come under relay control. We also need to program registers 70 through to 76 inclusive. For register 70 needs to be set to a zero. That brings our analog control under 10 volts. Default is five, and if you don't change it, the speed will vary on the spindle. You just won't be able to control what speed you get out of it. Parameter 71, I've left at 20. Seems to work okay. Parameter 72, I've set that to 400. That's the frequency of the spindle. So set it to whatever the frequency of your spindle is. Registers 73 through to 76 are all set to zero. Now that you've got those changed, we should now have a fully functioning spindle under control of either MAC3 or UC CNC. Now don't worry too much about these values. I'll put a document on my website outlining what changes you need to make to both MAC3, UC and C, and the VFD drive. Let's give it a try, shall we? I'm going to start by clicking on here, spindle counterclockwise. Now the spindle starts and it's running at 6000 RPM. Even though the spindle speed down here doesn't know what it should be. I'm going to go to the MDI screen and we can see it here and under input I'm going to go S12000 and the spindle winds up to just a fraction over 12,000 RPM. I'm going to enter another command of S6000 and the speed reduces down to 6300 RPM. If I go S10,000, which is the normal speed I do most of my machining at, or at least the starting speed, again it ramps up to just a little bit over 10,000 RPM. And finally I'll go S15,000 which takes me up to just a little bit under 15,000 RPM. If I click the spindle key again, the spindle will turn off. So it really was that simple to connect my Gecko drive to the spindle and then bring it under control of Mac 3 and UC CNC once I figured out how to do it of course. Now even if you don't have a Gecko drive and the chances are that you don't then you can still do the same thing by putting a small interface board between the breakout board and your VFD. You can use the pulse with modulated signal from Mac 3 to drive the small board which converts it to a voltage between 0 and 10 volts which then goes into the VFD and tells it how fast it needs to run. But there's an even better way of doing it. You can use RS-458. You can buy a small, cheap adapter, a little USB device that plugs into your PC, you run two wires to the VFD, and you can then control it from there. And it's probably far more accurate than using the method that I've just demonstrated here as well, as far as speed goes. So I currently have one of these on order, and as soon as it arrives, I'll get it installed, try get it running, and we'll have a good look and see if we can make it work. Any documentation I've used, the drawings and the programming requirements for the VFD, I'll put on my website, www.cncnuts.com. 
In the meantime, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch us later. Cheers.